This is the schematic symbol of a potentiometer. This is what a potentiometer might look like. This particular potentiometer has six leads, but really you're, we're only going to be using three of the leads. Another potentiometer might look like this, and this is um, called a trimmer or a trim pot or a trimming potentiometer. And what this does is that it allows you to make any adjustments on a circuit board that you would need to using a, a, a Phillips screwdriver in this particular case. This one is intended to mount on a panel for let's say volume control or something like that. And a potentiometer is just a fancy voltage divider. And a voltage divider is like saying you have two resistors. This is one way of actually showing a resistor in a schematic. You can also do it like this. And the voltage you get, the volt, you can have a, let's say a plus and then a minus here. This would be the minus pole, this would be the plus pole, this could be say a battery. And you'll have a voltage at this point matching the voltage of the actual battery, but at this point it'll be somewhere in between depending on the value of these resistors. A potentiometer would create this scheme just by moving the wiper of the potentiometer. Say the wiper was in this location, and this is a wiper. When a wiper, a wiper is just the, um, the movement of the lead that would be inside the potentiometer from one side of this resistor to the other side of this resistor and varying the resistance on either side. So if it was in this particular position, the wiper would be in this position, the resistance would be very low here, and then the resistance on the other side would be very long or very large. And this is where the wiper or the voltage would be. And the voltage would be a proportion of what you would have in the voltage source, such as the battery. And this is the formula to determine the voltage division. V out is equal to the resistance on one side, let's say it's R1, over R1 plus R2. As you know, there will be two resistors in this case. This could be R1 and this would be R2. And that would be multiplied by the voltage in or the voltage of the battery. So let's say that the resistance is exactly the same on either side. Let's determine what the voltage would be. So V out would be equal to, let's say the resistance is 100 ohms. And you'd have 100 ohms here also. R1 would be equal to 100 ohms, that's on both sides, and then you'd add that to another 100 ohms, which would be on the other side of the, the wiper, and that would be multiplied by, let's say we're using 5 volts here. Well, we can already see that we're getting double on the bottom than we are on the top. This is just uh, another way of saying 1 half. 100 plus 100 is 200. You can essentially cancel out the, the 100 and the ohms, and you'd have 1 half. So the VO would, equal, would be equal to 1 half, times 5 volts, and that would be equal to 2.5 volts. So by putting a lead right between two resistors at this point, you would get a reading of, if this was a 5 volt circuit, you'd get a reading here at 2.5 volts. Let's see what kind of voltage currency we can create using a voltage, voltage divider using a potentiometer. I'm going to make a little schematic here. This is the battery. And we're going to put different values to each of these resistors or different values of where the wiper is on the potentiometer and we'll find out what voltage we get. This, is, this will be the voltage out and we'll make a table of it. This is the symbol for a battery. Generally it's just a short line, long line, short line, long line. And the plus is generally where it starts with the short line and the minus is on the bottom. Another good thing to know about schematics is generally when you draw schematics you want your your ground to be going down and your positive voltage to be going up. So let's get to our table. Let's make a table of R1, R2, and the voltage going out. And in this case we'll say this is a 5 volt battery. It's also important to know that this is R1 here. This particular resistor is R1 and this particular resistor is R2. And we're going to make this act like a potentiometer. Because a potentiometer has one full resistance over the entire thing. It's just where the, the wiper is within that resistor that determines the top resistance and the bottom resistance. So let's say R1 is 1 and R2, let's say this entire resistance is, is a, 20, a 20 ohm resistor. So we'll say 19 here. I'm not going to put 0 because you can't use um, a 0 in a numerator or denominator in division. So let's say this is 1 and 19. So you, you'll have 1 on the top of the 
in the numerator and you'll have 19 plus 1 in the denominator so you have 1 over 20 and that multiplied by 5 volts let's do this one up here so the R1 over R1 plus R2 times V in so R1 is 1 over R1 plus R2 19 plus 19 plus 1 that's 20 times 5 is equal to 0.25 volts. So the answer to this first line is 0.25 volts. And since we're talking about a potentiometer, when this goes higher, the, the resistance number one, the resistance, resistance number two goes lower proportionally. So this would be 18. So it would be two divided by 18 plus two. So it would be two divided by 20 again. The, t the denominator will always stay the same with the calculations when it comes to potentiometer. So the output voltage will be 0.5, be half of a volt. The next one would be three, say three ohms. And then this one would be 17 ohms. Three ohms at the top, 17 ohms at the bottom. And three divided by 20 is 0.15 and then multiply it by point or multiply it by five and we get three quarters of a volt So we'll, we're seeing as the resistance gets higher on the top and lo and lower on the bottom The voltage is getting higher. Let's continue with four and 16. We can pretty much guess what this is going to be This is going to be one volt five and 15 and we get 1.25 is one and a quarter 6 and 14, this will yield 1.5, 7 and 13, this will be 1.75, 8 and 12, 2 volts. We haven't even gotten halfway there yet because we know that we haven't gotten equal resistance on each side. And when we get to 2.5, we'll find that those will be equal. So we'll have 9 and 11 will be 2.25, 10 and 10, this is the halfway point. And you can see that we have 2.5 volts and 2.5 volt, volts is right in the middle of 5 volts so it looks like the the formula is working and if we have the potentiometer right in the middle if we have the the wiper right in the middle of the let's take a look at this yeah if we have the wiper right in the middle of the resistor then we're going to get a half of the voltage output from the voltage in so now let's go 11 and 9 and we should have 2.75. I had to start on a new sheet because I was running out of room. Okay, so we are at 11 for R1, 9 for R2, we get 2.25, 2.75, and then 12. This goes down to 8, and this is 3 volts. R1 is 13, and this would go down to 7, and we have 3.25 volts. 14, and this would be 6. We would have 3.5 volts. 15 for R1, 5 for R2, the voltage would be 3.75. 16 for R1, 4 for R2, we would have 4 volts, and one more volt to go. And you can see that we're getting down to the bottom. 17 for R1, 3 for R2, and this would be 4.25. 18, 2 for R2, 4.5 volts. And then 19 and 1 would be 4.75. Now as we approach 0 and as we approach 20, um, but not getting to 0, we would get closer and closer to 5 volts. And the same thing with here, we get closer to closer, closer and closer to 0 volts as we approach 20 and as we approach 0 for R1, uh, approaching 20 on R2. So you can see how proportionally as a potentiometer changes the resistance on either side, you have a a change in voltage from zero to five, to five volts. And just like the potentiometer you saw before, it has three leads. And essentially this lead is gonna have the voltage out. This lead will have the plus, will, will, will be connected to the plus, and this lead will be connected to the minus. This will be minus, and this will be plus. So let's go ahead and try this and see if we get a volt if we get different voltages as we would suspect if we connect it to a voltmeter and putting a battery across the the leads and measure the this particular lead. I'm going to connect a potentiometer. You can see I'm using these three leads. I'm going to connect the battery to the two outer leads because that's the ends of the resistor. Actually, let me I'm going to show you what the resistance would be all the way across so you know 
that this is an actual resistor. So I'm gonna put a lead, put a lead on one side, a test lead on one side, and a test lead on the other side. And we'll see what we have on the multimeter when I turn it on for ohms. So it looks like we have 46.9K, and this is an actual, this is actually a 50K ohm resistor, and you can see it says it right on the, the back here. It says 50K ohms, and 46 is just uh, the, essentially the, the percentage of, act, the percentage of error that it's going to have. Um, it's about 3 ohms off, and it doesn't do anything when I, when I move the potentiometer because we're measuring the resistance of the entire potentiometer. Now if I put a if I put the test lead in the middle so I'm testing where the wiper is within that resistor and when I change the potentiometer you can see that it it changes and it goes up to 46.6 it'll go down to well, it'll go down to 0 0.1 0 0.2 20 so let's go ahead and put this resistor on a breadboard and we'll test the voltage from the center of it from the wiper of this resistor. So we'll put one side of the resistor. It doesn't really matter which side of the resistor it goes on. You're just going to get the, the mirrored output if you switch them around. Okay, so now I have the battery going through a 50k ohm resistor and let's test the, let's go ahead and test the um, voltage. I'm going to put the one test lead on negative for ground. Okay, and then I'm going to put a test lead on the wiper, and we'll see what voltage we have. Okay, I want to I want to make sure these things don't touch. These test leads don't touch. Okay, now when I move the, I'm going to turn this to voltage, and right now I'm getting six volts. This is a nine volt battery, so as I turn it, I'm getting 9.29 volts. When I turn it to the other the other direction. It's getting a lot smaller and it's one point or actually 0.5 millivolts so that's close to zero so you can see that we've created a successful voltage divider using or we've created a, su a successful way of making a variable voltage using a potentiometer